Okay. So let me show you that this other example here. Let's get a little closer here. All right, so let's say I wanted to have an effect where everything was kind of a soft focus blurry effect except for the couple. Well, it's already smart because I started in camera raw, so it's coming in as a smart object. So as soon as I go to the filter menu, the fact that this is a smart object means that my filters will also be smart, therefore editable. So when I click on it, at first it's saying, okay, blur everything. I usually take exactly the same approach. If I want to really tell what I'm doing, I'm going to blur more than I think I need to for the same reason. Instead of blurring two pixels and go, mm, can't really tell, that's probably a little much, but blur a little more knowing that you can always pull it back. Because it's a smart filter, it shows up in the layers panel and there's a couple of ways I can edit it. Actually, there's several ways. First of all, I can just remind myself by turning it on and off. Secondly, and this is a really important difference between that earlier concept I showed you of just duplicating the layer and applying a blur but not having any idea. Here, from now on, as long as I save this as a PSD file, every time I open it, I can look at this and go, oh yeah, 10.1 pixels because it's just built in. So I can get that information and I can edit it. Over here on the right, there's a little symbol which if I double click, it gives me blending options for the blur. This is the equivalent of me duplicating the layer, blurring it, and then lowering the opacity or blend mode. But with the added bonus that I can also edit the settings. And I don't have to worry about duplicating layers to do this. So this is where I could say, well, let's make this a little see-through so I get that kind of soft focus effect. That one thing, by the way, used to take like seven steps in Photoshop to make a soft focus effect. Now it's like smart filter, blur, lower the opacity, done. And done in a way that I can come back later on and go, what were those settings? That's a pretty cool advantage to be able to do that. Okay? Now, when I look at this in the context of the entire photograph, there's the mask for the filter. So just like adjustment layers have a filter, or excuse me, have a, a mask, so do filters. So same approach applies. Right now, the filter is applying to the entire photograph because I haven't told it not to. When you look at something, there's often a couple ways to do it. And I don't want to, someone should have made this into a drinking game. Maybe they did every time I say end up with, because be like, okay, because I know I say that a lot. But I, I really, that's changed a lot of things for me in the way I use Photoshop because in the past I would have said, okay, well, I want to, uh, keep them blurry but make the background uh, not, not blurry, I would initially would have painted black on a whole bunch of background area, which is kind of the long way. So if you think, you have to look at a photograph and say, how much do I want to hide, a little bit or a lot? And then you make the decision. If I just wanted to hide the fact that they were blurry, then I would take my paintbrush and just paint with black on top of them. And I'm just doing this really quickly and not very accurately just to give you the idea. So then in my layer mask, I end up with a little tiny black blob. If on the other hand, not that it makes sense in this case, that it was the other way around, where I wanted everything to be clear except for one little area, then instead of painting all this area with black, it'd be much easier using the same approach I did before, invert the mask so nothing is blurry. Now I take my paintbrush, switch my color to white, and now wherever I paint, I've in effect converted my paintbrush to the Gaussian blur brush. Because wherever I paint, I'm blurring. And to me, that's a really interesting possibility to do selective filtering attached to your brush. Whether you have a tablet or a mouse or whatever it is, that ability to blur by painting, in effect, I think is pretty interesting. Because now, and especially in the, in the context of this class, because this is mostly talking about working create in a creative way, you don't always want to say, I'll just select that exact area and blur it. You want to just go, I think I want to kind of blur over here. So by attaching it to a brushing motion by nature for most people is a lot more kind of let me experiment and see what happens than making a commitment to say I'm going to blur this area. 